Welcome everybody. We're uh, really excited to be at this point today. We've released the Arctic Research Plan that uh, we've been working on for the last couple of years and many of you have contributed to. And so we're, we're really excited with the uh, plan we've got. And we're really, really enthused and really um, just energized to, to share it with you today and, and get a little feedback on what you think and, and uh, hear your thoughts. So I'm, uh, I am Larry Hensman. I'm the executive director of the White House Interagency Arctic Research Policy Committee. And I'm also the assistant director of the for Polar Sciences it's in the White House Office of Science Technology Policy. And today we're, uh, we're fortunate to be joined by Nikush Carlo, who is our IARPIC Plan Development Director. We've also got Roberto Delgado, who's the Program Director for the Arctic Observing Network at the National Science Foundation and one of the plan's lead authors. We've also got Gary Gernart, who's the Director of the Department of Energy's Climate, excuse me, Climate and Environmental Sciences Division and one of the uh, IARPIC's agency principals. And we've got Liz, who you just met, and Liz Weinberg is IRPIC's community coordinator, is also here to assist us with uh, tech support and help to moderate the Q&A. And we also have many of our lead drafters present, and I'll, I'll now ask each of them to briefly introduce themselves. So um, let's, uh, let's start. I'm sorry, uh, Liz, I can't see. Would you, would you take us around, please? Will you coordinate the introductions, please? Sure. Yes, I know that Katya is here. Katya, could you introduce yourself? Sure. Hello, everyone. I'm Katya Konter. I'm international lead at USGCRP, and I was um, a drafter for the priority area of four, which is risk management and hazard mitigation. Hello, all. Thanks, Katya. Uh, Kaya, I know I saw your name. Good morning, everyone. This is Kaya Brooks. I'm with NOAA Fisheries in uh, Fairbanks, Alaska, and was uh, one of the authors for the education, training, and workforce capacity section. Thank you, Kaya. Uh, John Pierce, I think I saw your name as well. Good morning, everyone. John Pierce with USGS Alaska Science Center in Anchorage, uh, one of the co-authors of the founda foundational activities section of the new plan. Great, and did I miss anyone else? I haven't seen any of the other authors join yet. All right, Larry, I'll hand it back to you. Okay, thanks. And I'll apologize up front. I'm actually calling in from the American Geophysical Union meeting. I'm working up a little laptop in a, in a busy hallway. There's not a whole lot of quiet places around here. So please forgive me and just understand we're doing the best we can to, uh, to make a good, uh, good presentation and informative as possible. So um, before we begin, we do have a recorded message from uh, Dr. Panjanathan, who's the, the head of the National Science Foundation. He's also the chair of IARPIC, and um, the National Science Foundation have been key in everything IARPIC does, but really, really super helpful in development of this, uh, of this latest plan. So uh, Liz, would you play the video, please? Hello, everyone. My name is Setu Raman Panchanathan, and I'm the 15th director of the US National Science Foundation. As the chair of the Interagency Arctic Research Policy Committee, known as IRPIC, it is my pleasure to welcome you to the 2021 IRPIC Town Hall. And on behalf of the 16 federal agencies, departments, and offices whose collaboration make up this committee, as well as the countless Arctic researchers and external stakeholders involved, I want to thank you for joining us today to officially launch the 2022 to 2026 IARPIC Arctic Research Plan. Today, more than ever, our nation's Arctic regions face tremendous challenges brought on by a changing climate. Across the board, our nation's leaders are prioritizing Arctic research and those most severely impacted by these changes. Our new IRPIC research plan, like its predecessors, will play a critical role in advancing these priorities and steering national policy and objectives. At NSF, we remain fully committed to ensuring the success of the IRPIC Arctic Research Plan and the partnerships that serve as its foundation. To do this, I have outlined what I call NSF's 10 eyes on climate. 
these 10 themes continue to guide NSF's current and future Arctic priorities, investments, and strategic actions. Today, I want to highlight three of these that I believe make up the very core of the new Arctic Research Plan and the mission of those involved. First is immediacy. The Arctic continues to be the fastest changing region on Earth, and we no longer have time to wait. The rapidly evolving challenges facing these regions are complex and dynamic. These have global implications and profound impacts for all Arctic communities. Because of this, we must act now with intention and purpose. Second is integration. The interconnected and complex processes in the Arctic create research questions that are best addressed by multiple federal agencies working together. These are not geoscience problems or biology problems. They are not a math or a physics problem or even humanities or social behavior problems alone. They are all of the above and more. They require innovative, integrative, and multidisciplinary approaches built on a foundation of partnership. This integration is absolutely critical. It supercharges progress and opens access to new resources and platforms for innovative solutions. And finally, the third and perhaps most important priority I want to highlight is inclusion. Arctic residents and indigenous people are experiencing unprecedented levels of warming that are destroying buildings and roads, swallowing shorelines, and threatening homes, health, and livelihoods. To best support those affected and help mitigate the hazards of climate change, we must prioritize listening and inclusion. In accordance with President Biden's memorandum on tribal consultation and strengthening nation-to-nation -nation relationships, NSF and our federal partners are working hard to include local voices and indigenous knowledge more effectively in our Arctic research efforts. We hope to promote leadership from within the indigenous communities so that they may help us better shape questions, conduct research, and interpret results. At NSF, we have a long history of investing in these efforts. Most recently, we have invested more than 100 million through our Navigating the New Arctic program. This program truly embodies these three eyes, working closely with Arctic communities and indigenous peoples to address their specific needs and identify ways that scientific products can better serve their communities. And I'm proud to say that all three of these themes, immediacy, integration, and inclusion, play a central role in shaping the goals and priorities of today's 2022 to 2026 Arctic Research Plan. This plan presents a bold new vision for the future of interagency Arctic research efforts and paves the way for remarkable collaboration and convergent science. Of course, the future success of this plan is grounded in what we have accomplished over the last five years. I hope that you will join us today in taking a moment to also acknowledge the resounding success of the previous Arctic Research Plan and the extraordinary efforts of those who contributed to the work it supported. These accomplishments highlight the incredible strength of partnerships and their ability to power discovery and innovation throughout our world. They give me great hope for the success of the new IRPIC Arctic Research Plan. Thank you again for joining us today for this very important and exciting moment. Together, our collective impact can continue to create positive change around the world and bring lasting benefits to Arctic communities for decades to come. Thank you. That was excellent. That was a wonderful introduction to what we're trying to do. And, and it's, it's just, uh, I'm really so happy with the engagement that we've had from NSF and the support. And so we, uh, we really want to try and amplify Dr. Penchenikin's perspective and, and, and vision on taking this forward. And so we, uh, I think we've got a good, good path forward and we're really uh, 
really excited to engage with the research community in, in, in reaching those goals. So I, I mentioned at the beginning how excited I was about this new plan. So this, is a, this plan is markedly different approach from the previous two federal Arctic research plans. So this plan is, is built upon the accomplishments and understanding that have been developed in the recent decades of Arctic research, much of which many of you have us contributed to. And so for many years, our efforts were directed to investigate and explore and understand the, the biological and physical and social processes occurring in the Arctic. And in this plan, we're taking on a higher order of higher order challenges, more complex challenges of importance to the people in the Arctic and to the state of Alaska and, and to the whole circumpolar Arctic. And I'm, I'm very excited by the process of addressing these important societal challenges through convergent research and collaborations among many disciplines, bringing together people from different expertises and different sectors of society. So um, I wanna talk a little bit about, uh, about what IARPIC is. So, before we get to the to the to the Arctic Research Plan, I'm just going to give you a, a brief overview. So, IARPIC is the Interagency Arctic Research Policy Committee, which is a component of the National Science and Technology Council. And we sit in the White House. Um, IARPIC is tasked with enhancing the uh, the research in the Arctic, both by bringing together federal agencies to coordinate their their work and by facilitating conversations and collaborations among federal agencies and researchers and Arctic communities and others who work in the Arctic. So, so the federal and non-federal researchers and scientists and program managers and, and residents to help, to help work together to achieve these great goals. And so um, to accomplish this, we're, uh, we did bring together the leaders from the 16 federal agencies and departments and offices that have an interest in the, uh, in the Arctic. And we also run IARPIC Collaborations, which I'm sure many of you are aware of, which is a web-based platform that facilitates collaborations between federal agencies and non-feds with an interest in the region. And if you're not already a member, we uh, really encourage you to visit IARPICcollaborations.org to sign up for your free account. So um, I'm gonna now talk about some of the, uh, some of the accomplishments of the, of the last few years. So um, IARPIC is directed by the Arctic Research and Policy Act of 1984 to develop a new Arctic research plan every five years in collaborations with other federal agencies and the Arctic research community. So in January, we will release a report to Congress highlighting the successes of the, the present plan or the, the plan that is ending this year. So the 2017 to 2021 plan. So we are of just finishing an end of plan report that highlights the ways in which the federal agencies and partners in Arctic communities have really come together through IARPIC collaborations to coordinate Arctic research. Over the last five years, the IARPIC researchers collaborators have made incredible advances toward understanding the Arctic system and we've improved uh, collaborations and supported better observations and modeling and helped apply scientific research to human needs. The IARPIC collaborations has grown substantially over the last five years, there was a roughly 200% increase in the number of members. Of the over 3000 members of IARPIC, about 75% are non-federal, showing that IARPIC is, is really helping to facilitate connections between academia, the private sector, Arctic communities and, and government, both domestic and international. IARPIC has also helped incubate interagency programs. That's probably one of the primary activities that we've done. So many of the interagency programs and partnerships have improved Arctic observations. One example of this was the launch of the ISAT-2, which is a NASA satellite, which can measure ice height and change, as well as other Arctic parameters, and which will produce immensely useful data over the years to come. Um, the National Science, I'm sorry, the National Park Service and uh, other academic partners completed the largest caribou survey to date, surveying nearly 80% of the North American caribou to determine how climate change is affecting the phenology of, of their behaviors. And these data are also helping to advance uh, Arctic projections. The Arabic community helped co continue the uh, foundational models like sea ice, which projects sea ice change over time and interfaces with a number of other models and IARPIC members and scientists also helped constrain the rates of sea level rise and permafrost thaw, 
which, for example, using an internet comparison of models to suggest that the melting of Greenland ice sheet by 2100 would lead to a sea level rise contribution of 90 millimeters. So that's just from the, the Greenland sea ice uh, degradation. But 90 millimeters from Greenland is just uh, uh, pretty substantial. <laughs> we think about what the impact of that's going to be. Most importantly, much of this work was also applied applied science to where, where it was really needed. So with the help of IRPIC, member agencies and scientists helped establish the, the Bering Sea Harmful Algal Bloom Rapid Response Team. The warming waters and, and ice retreat continually increases the frequency of algal blooms, which can threaten the safety of coastal communities. So facilitated by IRPIC, the Bering Sea Harmful Action Team helped to identify and characterize the HABs in the Bering to provide warming warnings to communities. So these projects are just a, a sampling of the many projects that were featured in the end of plan report, and which are themselves a fraction of the many accomplishments of IARPIC over the last five years. And from those accomplishments, it's clear that IARPIC member agencies and collaborators have moved forward towards, have moved our understanding of the Arctic system greatly over the last five years. Which this is building a foundation for continued achievements into the next Arctic Research Plan. So I, that's really important to point this out: is that this the IRP collaborations, these partnerships between federal researchers and non-federal researchers, it really does work, and the achievements have been astounding. And so we're really optimistic about uh, about what we can do in the next five years. And so now I'm going to pass it over to my colleague Nikush Carlo, who's going to describe a little bit more about the Arctic Research Plan. So Nikush. Yeah, Basi, thank you so much, Larry. Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Nikush Carlo. Uh, I am Koya Khan Athabaskan. I'm the CEO of CNC North Consulting and the IARPIC Plan Development Director. I'm really thrilled uh, to share with you the newly released Arctic Research Plan 2022 to 2026. This is the cover that you'll um, that you see here on, on this slide, and we'll come, I'll tell you more about that a little bit later. So really this plan reflects more than two years of work by IARPIC um, federal agencies, both to coordinate amongst themselves, um, but also to listen and engage with the many different communities that live and work in the Arctic. Let me start with um, why this is important. Uh, for me, I'm passionate about work to include people that might not otherwise be heard, especially in processes that guide the delivery and the use of resources. And this particular topic of Arctic research, communities in Alaska have firsthand on the ground, and in some cases, multi-generational knowledge and experience that is critical to informing how research is conducted, on what topics, and how the results can be used for their own decision-making. So this means that relevant, timely, and flexible uh, research and data is essential in a region that is experiencing rapid environmental change. And what does this mean for the new Arctic Research Plan? IARPIC aims to be more responsive to Arctic communities by engaging and listening, including their ideas uh, when identifying strategic priorities. And we we'll hope we'll see that reflected in, in the new plan. We acknowledge that we haven't done this perfectly, but that IARPIC is going to keep trying and we'll do this better going forward. The Arctic Research Plan puts in place some mechanisms to support equity in research and climate change solutions. And these are also um, priorities of the Biden-Harris administration. So what else is new in this plan? The plan is a bold new vision. It's a high level strategy to guide federal agency collaboration. The federal agencies cannot do this work alone. So non-federal partners are going to be really vital to address urgent and emerging questions about the Arctic. Toward that end, this new plan includes a new two-year implementation cycle. So this cycle will um, help provide relevant and timely information about uh, agency, federal agency work for decision makers and other partners at, at multiple scales. Also, where previous plans have really focused on environmental processes, this new plan uh, shifts to address societal issues that require a more complex and multidisciplinary approach. So this, this graphic, as I mentioned, is the report cover. And um, it's really important to us because 
it reflects that more holistic approach that we're trying to achieve. I want to say huge thanks to artist Molly Trainer from Nome, Alaska for the very detailed um, center il illustration and Eric Klein um, for the overall uh, graphic design. The new plan addresses the relationships between people and the environment and the research we urgently need in order to better understand and respond to the most rapidly changing region on earth. In this next slide, um, this is what we call the plan uh, framework graphic. If you put, took part in, in any of the plan development process, you, this will probably be very familiar to you. It has been um, updated um, and it shows the structure of the plan. So across the top, uh, you'll see four policy drivers and this is where US research supports US policy. Uh, and these directly connect to the other elements of the plan. In the center in red, what I call the fan portion, um, you'll see the four priority areas with icons indicating which policy driver they support. The priority areas represent areas of broad cross-cutting research focus and each has a goal that drives the plan. So we'll, we'll speak more about the goals in a moment. The priority areas are community resilience and health, Arctic system interactions, uh, sustainable economies and livelihoods, and risk management and hazard mitigation. Below the priority areas in blue on the bottom are foundational activities. These activities are essential to achieving the priority areas and will remain foundational to Arctic research well beyond the five-year duration of the plan. The foundational activities are data management, education, training, and capacity building, monitoring, observing, modeling, and prediction, participatory research, and indigenous leadership in research, and technology innovation and application. And finally, in the center, uh, you'll see the IARPIC logo, the iceberg, and that represents the IARPIC collaborations platform, which we'll be using to put the plan into action. On the next slide, I'll uh, review the, our engagement process um, that we use during plan development. So while the plan uh, was by law drafted by federal agency staff, we really couldn't have possibly created the, this plan without robust engagement from researchers and communities. We held two engagement periods, one to inform the content of the plan, so before it was drafted, and one to receive feedback on the first draft of the plan. Uh, we asked for and received feedback through a number of, of channels. This was a useful multi-prong approach um, that's actually different than approaches that we've used in previous plans, and it really helped to um, contribute to shaping the plan. We held webinars, um, sessions at conferences, uh, collected official comments uh, through the Federal Register notice, um, conducted direct outreach um, to indigenous communities and other communities. We also held a workshop during the first engagement period to develop draft priority areas and foundational activities. We used radio and our monthly email newsletter to get the word out as well. So I really want to extend a heartfelt thanks um, to uh, all, all of you and, and anyone who contributed along this process. Um, you did so um, so graciously uh, and likely multiple times to inform the plan. Uh, and we really could not have done this without you. So thank you very much. I'm now going to hand it over to uh, Roberto Delgado, who is going to provide an overview of the priority areas and foundational activities. Roberto was the lead drafter for priority area one, which is community resilience and health. Thank you, Nikush. I'll start by saying that one of the things I'm excited about in the New Arctic Research Plan is the range of opportunities for expanding cross-cutting science activities, more so than before, at least compared to the previous plans, in an effort not only to advance knowledge about the Arctic and the Arctic environment and its residents, but also to help inform different levels of decision-making, as you've already discussed. Um, for example, the first priority area is here, community resilience and health. The goal here is to improve 
community resilience and well-being by strengthening research and developing tools to increase understanding of interdependent social, natural, and built systems in the Arctic. Barrier two is Arctic systems interactions. The goal here is to enhance our ability to observe, understand, predict, and project the Arctic's dynamic interconnected systems and their links to the Earth system. It's also worth pointing out that much of what was covered in the last Arctic research plans have been rolled up into this priority area. Priority area three is sustainable economies and livelihoods. This is a relatively new area not explicitly addressed in previous IARPIC research plans, but with opportunities for improving partnerships and strengthening research collaborations with Arctic communities, as well as addressing important societal issues. Its goal is to observe and understand the Arctic's natural, social, and built systems to promote sustainable economies and livelihoods. The fourth priority area is risk management and hazard mitigation, another relatively new topic of research interest for IARPIC and which emerged during the plan development phase. Its goal is to secure and improve quality of life through research that promotes an understanding of disaster risk exposure, sensitivity to hazards, and adaptive capacities. I also happen to contribute to the drafting of one of the foundational activities, and as Nikush mentioned, they support uh, the priority areas. Specifically, they cut across research fields and inform the entire plan. These activities are meant to provide support and foundation necessary to achieve success across the different priority areas. They are listed here on the slide and include data management, education, training, and capacity building, monitoring, observing, modeling, and prediction, participatory research and indigenous leadership and in research, as well as technology application and innovation. I'll now turn it over to Gary to provide an overview of implementation. Thank you. Um, I'm just coming up here a minute. So just as a, a, a preview, we heard earlier from Larry and also from Ponch how important the implementation plan is. And in a sense, a, um, a strategy really is incomplete without that plan in place. So that's what I'm gonna be talking about right now. So we all know the Arctic is changing at a very rapid pace. And Nikush actually mentioned a little, just a, a moment ago that instead of having a five-year cycle for the implementation plan, we're shifting towards a biennial cycle. And this is mainly because the rapid pace of change in the Arctic is fast enough that we have to be nimble and adaptive to any type of extreme events that might alter our course on how we implement. So the intent there is to actually remind ourselves also that the COVID pandemic is really a, a year and a half, two year, uh, I would say you could call it a crisis or a severe event that we've had to face. And other types of events, which might be environmental, could be experienced over the next five years. So taking these into account really spells a need for a, bi for a biennial imp implementation plan. And it'll extend over the period of 2022 through 2026. So the planning structure is also to provide opportunities for the Arctic researchers and residents to drive the work that we do and not just respond to it. We in DOE, at least where I work, we're really excited about this new structure and to work with other agencies in developing objectives and deliverables. We're serving within DOE as co-leads of a number of these topics, such as sustainable economies, economies and livelihoods priority area, as well as Arctic system interactions priority area. We're also serving as a co-lead for the monitoring, observing, modeling, and prediction foundational activity. And we're quite excited about our roles there. So this is an exciting time to, to be part of IARPIC and we're making shifts towards implementing the Arctic plan over the next five years. And we see this new approach to implementing as a big step in being more responsive to emerging research questions and to engage new people from across federal agencies as well as outside the federal government. So next slide, please. So. The implementation timeline is shown here, and we intend to release the first biennial implementation plan in about nine months. Yeah, that's in September of 2022. And like the Arctic Research Plan, the implementation plan must be drafted by federal agency staff, but we depend upon you and other community members to provide input on what we should, what we should focus on 
Many of the comments we received during the public, public engagement periods while drafting the ARP were relevant to implementation and they will be definitely considered. So let's go to the next slide, please. So this really illustrates where we are today and we're moving towards the January, March time period, which is really starting next month. And uh, this is a period we'll, where we're gonna hold public meetings, provide other opportunities for input about what specific topics should be pursued within each of the priority areas. We really need your help with this. This is something we can't do alone. We need broad engagement. And if you would like to participate in this planning process, we encourage you to sign up for an account on the IARPACollaborations.org website and get on our newsletter and mailing list. And we really look forward to your engagement. And this is gonna be an exciting process. So at this point, I'm gonna pass the baton back to Larry and I look forward to the rest of this session. Thank you very much, Gary. And uh, so I wanna talk a little bit just about the, the, the context of the Arctic Research Plan. So our understanding of the Arctic directly aligns with the Biden-Harris administration priorities of tackling climate change and promoting racial equity. So the changing climate in the Arctic impacts energy, water, food security, community health and resilience natural resource development, infrastructure, commercial activities, ecosystem services, and hazard mitigation. This interdisciplinary plan positions federal agencies to better understand and effectively respond to the effects of climate change in the Arctic and beyond. The plan includes participatory research and indigenous leadership in research as a foundational activity with a focus on increasing capacity and enabling communication and coordination while sustaining engagement and building trust, and also putting the Arabic principles of, of conducting research in the Arctic into practice. This plan includes education and training and capacity building as a foundational activity with an emphasis on creating new opportunities for rural and indigenous students and interweaving disciplinary academics and indigenous knowledge. And, and finally, the plan supports the administration's economic priorities by focusing on the needs of the Arctic communities through the priority area on sustainable economies and livelihoods and to the COVID-19 public health landscape through the priority area on community resilience and health. Um, next slide, please. So we hope that as, as, as every, all my colleagues have mentioned, we hope you will be involved in implementing this new Arctic Research Plan. We appreciate everyone's hard work who's, who's helped us put this together and, and all the input we've received so far and hope you will continue to join us. Contributions and leadership from all the non-federal partners help IARPIC and our member agencies support the health of the Arctic environment and the well-being of Arctic communities. So as we've mentioned, to stay involved, please sign up for an account on IARPICcollaborations.org if you haven't already, and follow us on Twitter and Facebook. Also, um, I just wanna mention while uh, all my colleagues were talking, I took a quick look at the uh, at the participants on this call, and I see Martin Jeffries is on, is on the, and so I'm really grateful for uh, Martin for joining us today, but also I want to express my thanks to Martin in that, as we mentioned earlier, this plan builds upon the accomplishments of the, uh, the previous Arctic Research Plans, and Martin uh, led the development of the second Arctic Research Plan and, and its implementation, so uh, everything we're doing today builds upon all of that work, and so we owe uh, a dedicated date debt of gratitude to Martin and many others like him who have, who have helped advance Arctic science to where we are today. So with that, I will uh, acknowledge that I really appreciate your attention and your presence today, your participation, we appreciate that. And now we're gonna open the floor for questions and discussion. So, uh, so we'll take any comments or, or questions that you may have now. Thank you all. Thank you, Larry, and thank you to all of our presenters. Um, so we have about 20 minutes for questions. Uh, you are welcome to either put your questions in the chat, uh, or if you'd prefer to ask them out loud, you can use the raise hand function. Um, and that'll just bring you to the top of our list so we can see that you have a question. Uh, and if you are on the phone, it is star nine to raise your hand uh, and star six to unmute yourself. So Jack, uh, Jack, Jack yeah, this is all very exciting. I, I just had one, I don't know, maybe not very useful question, but 
if the implementation, the first draft or the first version of the implementation plan is not coming till September, does IARPIC and the federal government have no real plan about what to do between now and then? Or are we gonna continue on the old plan until the, the first implementation plan is released? Uh, we're, we're not even stopping to take a breath, actually. <laughs> so so um, the IARPIC collaborations, we have nine teams, nine collaboration teams that were established under the 2017 to 2021 um, Arctic Research Plan. And those collaboration teams and nine other self-forming teams already have have plans that they're working on, things they're moving forward on. And so we're, we're uh, encouraging them to continue on to complete those. At the same time, the each of those, those disciplinary teams have a great deal to contribute to the priority areas that were described today. So each of those those collaboration teams will be contributors to addressing those those efforts, and so those collaboration teams are are moving forward, developing plans, seeing how they can how they can collaborate, seeing what they can contribute, seeing what the uh, what the urgent needs are, but also where the science is, so what they can deliver upon to those. And so they're uh, they're scrambling, making progress, and moving forward just uh, just as we expected that they would. Doug Cosby has. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Doug Causey at the University of Alaska, uh, Anchorage. Um, uh, it's a balmy day down here, it's, it's only zero. So um, uh, I always am glad I don't live in Fairbanks, Larry. All right, uh, the, 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 <laughs> the question I had was, um, uh, it, it is with, with great anticipation that, that the community is looking forward to see the plan. I'll, I'll tell you one of the slight hurdles that that um, we have outside of the government is is um, uh, finding ways that um, enable uh, the the um, non governmental researchers to interact and uh, partner with the federal agencies in really effective ways. And um, are we have you thought about um, how to make that more possible? Actually, I'm, I think that's been one of the major, I think that is the, the major success of, of IARPIC collaborations in that the, uh, the focus has been to facilitate those partnerships, those collaborations between federal and non-federal researchers. So they've identified um, specific, um, oh, I can't remember what the word, uh, pr program elements where they uh, were working towards to, to achieve and contribute and work together. We don't have the program elements going into this, this goal. We have instead, we're working on the uh, the goals and the objectives that are going to be defined, and from there we'll we'll build the the partnerships, the collaborations, where the contributors can uh, the the collaborators, researchers can contribute what they can to resolving those challenges, those questions, and 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 it's been actually I think it's just been phenomenally successful because when we bring together these uh, this build this partnership, build these, create these opportunities for, for collaborations. That's where we've had these wonderful achievements, these huge, huge successes. So go, just going back a minute to talk about the successes of the, of the, of the 2017 to 2021 plan. So those were, were uh, collaborations, partnerships on federal and non-federal researchers. Looking back and developing the end of the plan report, we asked for just uh, one or two sentences from each of the individuals involved, what the one or two sentences on the on the great accomplishments, and we got sixty pages of accomplishments, and so it's just huge. And we and 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 pulling all those together, it was really difficult to decide what to put into the end of plan report because there was so much accomplished. And so I think I think it's clear that uh, it's 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 possible for the uh, federal researchers and non-federal researchers to come together and bring their expertise, bring their data, bring their research platforms, bring their resources and share what they have and what they can contribute to really advance the science. I, I'm, I'm really excited about taking that concept forward into the future. Thank you, Larry. We have a question in the chat that I think maybe Roberto could answer. Um, it is, is the topic of harmful algal blooms, algal bloom impacts along uh, the potential to further increase due to climate effects still a priority in the future research priorities? And what about efforts to minimize and address HAB issues in the Arctic? 
Um, sure, There's, I'll, I'll take that initially. Um, yeah, so Helm Problem Blooms are, are mentioned both in priority area one and priority of four, so community resilience and health as well as risk management and hazard mitigation. Um, so yes, it does remain a priority uh, in, in, the, in the new plan. Um, as, as for what about efforts um, to address HAB issues, you know, that I think the specific details will be developed um, in the coming months in terms of what are the best ways that the federal agencies together can work with non-federal partners to address those issues. Um, so I'm, I'm I don't think certain, but I anticipate that there will be some objectives and or deliverables um, in the in the two year implementation plan that will address this topic. Katya, did you want to add anything for priority area four? Just a very small detail that um, harmful algal blooms are noted in the PA4 under acute and episodic events. So yes. Roberto provided very detailed response. I also see our Lieutenant Governor Myers with us today. So thank you very much for joining us, Lieutenant Governor. Oh, absolutely, Larry. And Larry, thank you for uh, this forum and, and uh, for the, uh, for the uh, research plan. Um, I, I guess my, my uh, question, Larry, is, um, and you're very familiar with our SCORE, um, our state committee for research that we have up here in the state of Alaska, working very closely with our university professors. Um, do you see a, a conflict on, on what we're doing in Alaska and, and what uh, research activities will occur from, from this, this plan? And, and I say that because, um, you know, we, we acknowledge the, the changing climate up here, but, but we, we live here and, and uh, we make our livelihoods here and, and, and uh, we, we want everyone to have a good um, uh, standard of, of, of life and living and, and in, in a healthy, um, clean environment. So we're looking for opportunities for growth and development uh, with the changing climate. For, for example, um, we, we see now that we can grow more crops and vegetables that we haven't been able to in the past. Uh, we see that we can expand our tourism. Um, we also are seeing uh, the, the fish uh, migrating further north, which is bringing uh, more opportunities uh, in other regions of, of Alaska for, for fishing. And, and frankly, you know, with the um, permafrost thawing, we now have access to some rare earth minerals that are uh, critical in, in development of, um, of renewable uh, energy, which, which I, I know is a, a, is a high priority of the Biden administration. And currently, most of those are being imported from China. So I, I, my question, I guess, bottom line is the direction that we're heading as a state. I just want to make sure we're, we're working together and not um, in conflict. Absolutely. So for the other uh, members of the, uh, the webinar today, so SCORE is the Statewide Committee on Research. And they produced a, a document on the, the urgent needs of research within the state of Alaska. And actually that was one of the, uh, the documents that we utilized as input to decide what the, the highest priority research needs were among many other documents as far as, uh, and, 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 and we used the guidance from the state of Alaska as, as far as what, needed to be done. And so what, one of the uh, priority areas, we have four priority areas. One of the priority areas is sustainable economies and livelihoods. And so we agree 100% that is an urgent issue. And so um, there are, and I, you were asking about the conflicts with SCORE. Unfortunately, there's a lot of work to be done. So there are no conflicts. There is uh, plenty of work to do. But we do hope that the work and, and expect that the work that is done will lead to some resolution or at least some lessening of the uh, the issues and the problems that are associated with uh, the difficult economies in the Arctic right now, uh, including, um, well, as, as you mentioned, the, the, the degrading permafrost, that, is, that there's a huge social and economic cost to the state of Alaska and to the communities, to the individuals, as far as just the design and construction of, of infrastructure that uh, has to be rebuilt or a huge maintenance associated with that that has a direct bearing on the on the drag on the economy and so we're hoping things that we can do like that that will address some of that to make the uh, 
make the resources of the state go further and make the uh, make the livelihoods of the people who live there better. And so that is the uh, that's a, it's a very strong underlying incentive of all the work that we're going to be doing. And so I don't I don't anticipate any conflicts with what the state needs and what um, we will try to deliver through this research activities. Is, do you, any others have a additional comments on that topic? I shouldn't. I should throw back I Larry, I can make a, this a, a quick comment, and that is that the question was, was posed, and that is, let's say, were the constituents in Alaska a major component of how we develop this plan, at least up to where we are today? And I would say last year, the workshop, actually, time is running away from me, but it was about a year ago or a year and a half ago, there was a major workshop that was conducted, and it was, in a sense, it was uh, focused on the uh, on the Arctic broadly, but Alaska was a major component. It, and I would say Alaska was very well represented. And we uh, actually identify Alaska as one of the major beneficiaries of where IARP is heading. So I guess I could just leave it at that. The economic development agenda within the state of Alaska should, I think it should be tightly coordinated with IARPIC in large part because a lot of the planning and a lot of the modeling and analysis that's going on in the Arctic could be used for, I would say, the state of Alaska. I think I'll just stop. Thanks, Lieutenant Governor. Thanks, Gary. And we do, we, we are sincere in our hope that this, uh, that this work is of great value to the, to the state of Alaska and to the people of Alaska. Thank you. Are there other uh, comments? So I see you, you have your hand up. Do you have another question or is it just still up? I guess in the ladder. Um, as a reminder, you if you have a question, you're welcome to use the raise hand function. You can also uh, put your question in the chat. While we're waiting for questions to come in um, in the chat or or otherwise, I also I noticed that Simon Stevenson uh, mm -hmm. is also on the line, so I just wanted to acknowledge his contributions over the many decades, both to IARPIC and to Arctic Sciences. He's a former um, uh, section head for the Arctic Sciences section at the National Science Foundation. So I just wanted to acknowledge Simon's contribution. Thanks, Nikushin. I did not see Simon on the call. So thank you, Simon, for joining us. And Simon also held the role that uh, that uh, Martin had previously and I hold now. So thanks, Simon, for uh, for also getting helping us get to this point. We've got a very large audience today. So let's it looks uh, like James anticipate there must be some other comments. Yeah, it looks like James. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, Larry, it's kind of a hi. Good to see you. <laughs> Nancy says hi too. The um, the still following up with a little bit, the Lieutenant Governor. I am not a. I am all. Well, I am an engineer. I'm not a scientist. My my doctoral work is in management and collaboration. And it always strikes me that Arctic research needs to move more quickly towards implementation. Or at least Alaskan Arctic research than other great research projects are because the, the, the need is so apparent. So I know you have the economic component and like the sustainability component. I'm trying to remember the plan now. It's difficult for management scientists to engage with NSF and IARPIC to a certain extent, yet research and how people work together and collaborate together to actually implement these projects in the Arctic is still an essential component. How do we kind of open that small silo of, of, of research? I uh, won't we'll quite go into this sociology silo, that's a little bit too deep into that, but this aspect of implementation and working is unique and we still come at it with the same um, constructs of how we work projects elsewhere, which I believe are not successful. And I, I just constantly, I'm writing a concept paper and I don't trust. I constantly come back to the comment that was made at the 2050 
Arctic Futures Conference, quoting Sheila Wakluti about researchers like snow geese. You know, exactly when they arrive, they eat all the food, they shit everywhere, they leave, and we don't hear from them from a year. And that's almost a true statement. Well, now almost it is a true statement. And part of it is the tenure constraints on faculties at universities in regards to research. What it says to me is that there's a, still a, a gaping trust between those that are being implemented on or researched on versus where needs are. And again, from that conference, somebody wants to research a Norwegian rat and I want a break wall. So how do we move the management and interaction with people and even from a research perspective, not how do we collaborate on research, but research and how we get along. How do we move that narrative up a little bit in the ladder? Well, Jim, it, 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 it almost sounds like you've read the plan. <laughs> well, if only, you know, I'm looking so, forward. So actually, I, that, that is really what drove us a lot. This plan is substantially different than previous plans in that the previous work was really important and it got us to where we are today to be able to do this. Previous plans were, were really looking at processes, environmental processes, uh, the uh, physical, biologic, uh, social issues. And what we're trying to do now, we're taking on more societal challenges, the really higher level problems that, that you read about in the newspaper, the things that are really, that are driving the problems within the Arctic communities. And so they're, they're issues that require combinations of skills, combination of expertise, and really take large groups working together to be able to resolve these, these really complex higher order societal challenges. And so what we're doing is we've, we've uh, if you look at the four priority areas, they're, they're not targeting disciplinary problems, but they're targeting about how do we address these, these complex issues that require all these, the, the engineers to work with the economists, to work with the, the geophysicists. And we're, we're taking them on in a, in a shorter time frame, So we've got a five-year Arctic research plan strategy, but only a two-year biennial implementation plan. And so what we're doing is we're gonna take those, that two-year plan, we're gonna identify those, those objectives and we're gonna attack them and then hopefully kind of resolve them as best we can and then move on to the next challenges. And so we're, uh, we are trying to look at the issues that need to be resolved and take everything we've got, throw it at it and resolve it and move on. So that I think, I think this is a good approach for you know, really, really issue-based science, bringing the science to, uh, to help the people. I, 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 I think we can do it. So hopefully that, hopefully that answered your question, but I'll, I'll ask my colleagues if somebody else has a better answer to please jump Thanks, in. Thanks, Larry. It's like you read my dissertation. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Thanks, Larry. I think we have time for one more question and I just see, saw one come into um, the chat. The NOAA Arctic report card released on Tuesday included a chapter on COVID-19 impacts on food access with the Indigenous Food Knowledge Network. This chapter included a section identifying challenges and solutions and actors. Will the research plan encourage research that can inform action? In the context of Arctic systems interactions, how will the plan inform strategies to minimize negative impacts from rapid changes and feedbacks? You know, I think I'd like to toss that to uh, my, my colleagues, Roberto and Gary, and or Gary, as far as this is, this is it's really a, an agency type response. Roberto or uh, uh, call it Roberto on. start. Thanks. Um, yeah, no, so, so I think compared to the previous plans, which were really focused on understanding, detecting changes in natural and physical processes and, and, and social systems to, to a lesser extent, um, given that we are now focused on priority, cross-cutting priority areas. Um, to, to some extent, it's an applied science plan. Um, certainly we still have the natural, the Arctic systems interactions, which encompasses most of the previous research plans, but thinking about community and resilience and health, thinking about sustainable economies and livelihoods, um, as well as the, the risk management and hazard mitigation um, really is about calling for action uh, in terms of using the science and the outcomes, those, those products to help inform decisions at, across different scales. Um, 
I know we're almost out of time, but I wanted to add just something quickly based on, on the previous discussion and question in terms of, um, I don't see our, our, our PA3, our, our lead lead after here, but if I were to channel uh, Erica Hill, my colleague at NSF in Arctic Social Sciences, I think there's a, a real strong value in the integration of social sciences alongside the natural and the physical sciences that have been more, more conventional in Arctic research for many years, not to, to diminish the, the social science contributions. Um, and so this plan is taking uh, what at NSF we call a convergence approach, really looking at the overlap of the natural systems, the built environment and social systems to address these, these large societal questions. Um, I'll, I'll pass it on to Gary if he wants to add something to that. Well, I'll just add, I'll just add a few other comments and that is, I'll, this, I'll give you the, the DOE perspective and that is we try to take a systems approach. And that, you know we have these different priority areas, but really we had to bend them for practical purposes, but really there's a lot of overlap between them. And we just try to kind of take that systems view, make some progress as best we can. But I would say a goal within DOE, and I've seen this from, from other agencies, is how do we accelerate basic science to applications where we can benefit society? We don't want to rely upon traditional ways of publishing in a journal and wait for somebody to notice it, but really kind of accelerate that process because we are in an urgent uh, crisis now, at least with climate change. And states like Alaska, other other places around the Arctic are seeing that it's so rapid change up there that we do have to pay attention and accelerate new science into, into new capabilities. I'll just stop there. Okay, and with that, I think I'm afraid we need to end, but uh, one, I really please do look at the, uh, do look at the document and, and engage, you know, give us your feedback. Tell us what you think that the, the most urgent research needs are, how do, how do we attack them? and, and and what can you do to help us? And I think we can uh, we can mix we can do some great things in the next five years. But it's going to take the uh, it's going to take the contributions of all of us to get there. So with that, I will thank you all and uh, say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.